Hey everyone, welcome to Wikcode, where in this video we're going to learn how to code a video streaming app with Node. So here's an example of what we're going to be building. You can see what it's doing is we have a Node server over here that is streaming a video. And you can see it says we are live, and what this essentially means is right now we're on second 31. If we load this again, so say we join the stream at this time, 5001, we're now at second 37. So, and you can see the current time being logged out here. So whenever we join the live stream is the time that the video will be. So let's join it again. So localhost 5001, we're at 55 now, and now the live stream has ended. And once the video has ended, we can see we get the text live stream ended, the video no longer plays, and we can see logged out here, the video has ended. But so this is what we're gonna be building. From building this, we're gonna learn about the HTTP 206 status code, what streams are, and also some HTTP headers involved in streaming. But so before we start coding, let's go over what a stream is. So a stream is a collection of data where the data is available chunk by chunk or piece of data by piece of data. This makes streams handy for working with large amounts of data as all the data isn't loaded into memory at once. For example, instead of sending a whole video file to a client from a server, we can create a stream to the video and send down chunks of it. Video files are often several gigabytes in size, so sending a whole video file at once would spike a server's memory and slow it down. So if we just sent this whole video to the client, as opposed to streaming it, the memory in our express server, or node server over here, would be really high, which would cause performance issues. So streams allow us to send the video file in chunks, which saves our server's performance. But so, enough of that, let's start coding. So to do that, I'm just gonna open up a brand new empty directory. I'm gonna call it node live stream video, and I'll just open it up. Now to begin, let me zoom in one more time. To begin, let's just initialize our project as an NPM project. We're gonna do that with npm in it, es6-y. And now let's install some necessary dependencies. And so of course, what we're gonna use is express to handle user requests. And then we're also gonna install nodemon as a development dependency to update our code as we're coding. And all the streamings that we're gonna be using is just gonna be with nodes built in uh, modules. But next, let's create a for folder just called source to hold our source code. But before we create our server, let's first create an H HTML page that displays our video file. So in this here, let's just create this HTML file, which isn't really much to it, to show this video. It'll also have some log logic in it, but we're gonna create this in a folder called public, which is where our express server will serve static content from. And I'm just gonna paste in actually some HTML into a file, we're just gonna call it index.html. I'm gonna paste in some code right here. So what we're essentially doing in here is first we create an h1 element to display if the live stream is going on or if it's ended, which is this right here. We then have a video element right here to display our video. The video data is gonna be returned from the source right here, video, which is a route that we will code on our express server. And basically it'll supply the video data to this video element. Next is we have some JavaScript code in here. And what we do is we add a listener to our video element for when the video has ended, we're gonna change the text to say live stream ended of this text right here. So this is set on the front end. And we're gonna empty out the video source. And then here, when the page loads initially, we're gonna make a fetch request to current time, which of course will be a route that we will code on our express server, which sends the current time of the video. If it's not a number that's returned, which I believe is we're gonna say video ended, then it's gonna set the text to live stream ended and empty out the source. And if not, it's gonna set the video to the current time. And this is how essentially we're gonna give the user the current time that the server is showing to everyone. But this is all there is to our HTML or static content. Now let's set up our express server. And so I'm actually gonna do this in another folder called services, and I'm gonna call it express service.js. I'm gonna code this as a class just because I find it easier to go over in videos, but of course you don't have to actually write the express code as a class. But initially, I'm just gonna paste in some code again and go over it. So what we do here is first we just import the express and path modules, and we define a class called express service that extends our video service class. And the video service class here will be used to work with our video logic, and we'll um, code this class later. Then we create a private, um, a private variable, so this hashtag here means it's a private variable. And what it is, it's just gonna be the express app instance. Then we define two static properties, which are port and node environment variable. And of course, node environment will just be, we're gonna be in development mode. Port is just gonna be the port that our server is listening on. 
in our constructor, we just instantiate and ex or create an express object, and then we call our superclass constructor. Next, we have this private initialize method, which is gonna be used to serve up static content. So this line right here is gonna tell Express to serve up static files from inside this public directory over here, which of course is our index.html file, and it's also gonna be our video file as well. And then we just have another function right here, which is just gonna add some logging to our Express server. And what's important is we're logging out the method, the path, and then this header right here, which is the range header. And this is gonna be a very important header for working with partial content. And so let me go over why that is. So the range header right here is an HTTP header that indicates the part of the data that the server should return. So it's a request header sent up by the client that is basically telling the server what video data they want back. And it has quite a few different formats, but let me paste in one here. So right here, this would be the header where it has range, which is the header, a unit, the range start, and the range end. And what unit is right here is the unit in which the range is specified. And of course, this is usually in bytes. Range start is an integer that indicates the beginning of the request range, and range end is an integer that indicates the end of the request range. So for as an example, let's say the client wanted the server to return the first 200 bytes of a document. What it would set this header to is this. So it wants bytes, and it wants bytes 0 through 199, both 0 and 199 being inclusive, so it will be the first 200 bytes. But so when we're streaming video, basically the video element or the browser is gonna be sending up a request range header, which we then handle on the server to determine what content or how much data we wanna send back to the client. So internally, it will be the browser that requests the range it needs. And what we'll do, which you'll see later on, is we'll parse this header and return the requested range of bytes from our video. But now let's handle this video request. And so the video request is, of course, is gonna be this source right here. So this will make a, a request to video. So let's create that route. And I'm, of course, just gonna paste in some more code. And it's gonna be this video route right here. So essentially what this request will do is it will handle the requests coming from the HTML video element. And what it will specifically do is it will return the desired range of data to the client. So you can see we're handling get requests to the dash video route. We extract the range header and then use a method called calculate video info, this one right here, to obtain the desired range of bytes in the video file from this range header. And we're gonna create this method right here inside our video service class, um, which I'll of course go over soon. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some headers right here. And these headers will be used by the client to render the video appropriately. So the, the client's gonna send up the range at once. We create some headers that tells the client what to do with the data that we send back. And I'll go over each one of these headers soon. But next what we do is we add an HTTP status code of 206, which means partial content. And then we add the headers to the response. Of course, I'll go even go over this 206 code. Then what we do is we create a video stream from our video file. And we're gonna create this object right here too. But this essentially allows us to send chunks of the video file as opposed to the whole thing. And we use this start and end property to read a range from the file and not the entire file. And then we're gonna pipe this read stream to the response, which is essentially a write stream to the client. So this pipe method here is used to pass data from a readable stream to a writable stream. And in this case, it's passing our video data or reading video data and writing it to our response, which is a write stream back to the client. But so before we go any further, let's talk about this 206 status code. So this 206 status code is used to indicate that the request was successful and that the response body contains the requested chunk of data. This chunk of data is known as partial content, and partial content is a chunk of an available resource stored on a server. Sending partial content is often used to avoid the overhead of fetching unused resources, and this is why it's commonly used in video streaming. For example, it isn't uncommon for users to watch only part of a video, so why send all of the data? Instead, we can send separate chunks over time and stop if the user leaves. However, to work with partial content, there are a few HTTP headers that are required. So in our code here, we set quite a few HTTP response headers. And this is because certain headers are required to send partial content. One of these headers is content type, and this header indicates the media type of the resource being provided. In our code, we of course specify this as video or MP4 because we're providing a video back. Another HTTP header for sending partial content is the accept ranges header. 
and this header is a response header used by the server to let the client know it supports partial requests for file downloads. And the format for this header is basically accept ranges and then the unit or range unit. And the supplied range unit defines the range unit that the server supports. So here we're telling the client that we support partial uh, ranges in bytes. Another HTTP header for sending partial content is the content range header. And this is another response header where it indicates in a full body message, a partial message belongs, which essentially it's saying the part of data that it's returning. So it's saying, and this is the whole size of our video file. It's saying these are the bytes that are contained within this body message. But so that's all we need to do to handle our video. Let's uh, minimize this. Now let's handle our current time. So getting the current time of the video that's being displayed to the user. So here I'm going to create it, just add video time route. And all this is going to be is just return the time in seconds that the video is currently being streamed at. Note that this current time property right here will be defined in our video service class that we're going to create soon. So that's all there is to this route. And now let's focus on bootstrapping our server or adding all the middleware to it. And I'm going to do this in a method just called start. So down here, we're going to call start, which is going to add our static, basically add each one of these private methods. So we're going to initialize our server with our global middleware, add our logging, add our video route, our time route, and then we're going to listen on the provided port. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create our video service class to handle our video logic. But before we do that, let's create um, an entity to represent the video that we're going to be streaming. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder in here. I'm just going to call it entities. And in here, let's create um, something to represent our video. I'm going to call it stack overflow video.js because the video it's representing is about, it's a YouTube short on stack overflow, which I created. But all it's going to do in here is just going to export some information about this video, which is the path to it, how long it is, and the size in bytes. And now, of course, this is more static content, and we want our Express server to serve all that, or it is serving all our static content from this public folder. So we need to place our video file in here. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Sweet. So here's our Stack Overflow video, which is just a YouTube short that I made going over what a Stack Overflow is. But so now we've got that out of the way. Let's create our video service. So in here, I'm going to create a class called Video Service. And of course, this is going to work with all of our video logic. I'm just going to paste it all in and then go over what's going on in here. So first, we're going to create two static variables. One is the size of the chunk of data that we want to return to the client, which we'll see in a sec. And then the other is our actual video entity that we created here. Next, we have our current time instance, which is the current time of the video that is being streamed. We then create the constructor. And when we create our constructor, we set the current time, or when we instantiate an instance of this class, we're going to set the current time to zero. And then we're going to start our a private method called increment time. And what this increment time method is going to do is it'll increment the current time a property right here by one second every second. So every second until we are greater than or equal to the duration of the video, which comes from this right here, which is 58 seconds, we will increase the time, the current time by one. When we are over the length of the video, then we're going to set the current time the video ended and we're going to clear the interval. And this is why when the user makes a request to our current time route and they get is not a number, so this check right here, this comes from the fact that we've now set our current time to the string video ended. And now we have our calculate video info method. So this, which is called inside our express service, which is in add video route, which is called right here, it takes the HTTP range header. So what we do here is we first extract the first number that appears in the range header. We then either take the start, so this number here, with the chunk size added to it, or the end of the video file, whichever one is smaller. Because we don't want to send any bytes that aren't, we don't want to send a range of bytes that are actually bigger than the video file itself, which is why we use math.min. And this chunk size, adding this, says that whatever the server sends up, so say it sends up that it wants the range bytes 200 through 300. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we got your request. We're going to extract this 200, then we're going to add a megabyte to it, which is right here, and we're going to send that range back. So 200 plus 1 megabyte. So we're basically getting requests from the client. We ultimately decide the range of bytes that we're sending back. Then we say how much, then we calculate the length of the bytes, so how many bytes 
we're actually sending back to the client and then return all of these. But that's all there is to it. So that's all there is to get this application up and running. All we need to do now is just instantiate our express service and start it, which we can do inside our source. Let's create a server.js. And in here, we just have to instantiate an instance of our express service. And now let's just create a script inside our package.json file. Under scripts, we'll create a start script, which will set an environment variable of port and another node environment. And then we're gonna use nodemon to run it. But because we're using this dot here, we're essentially saying run what's placed in main, which for us is our source-server.js file. And then one thing to know also is this sets, setting environments variables this way works on Unix. So in like Mac and Linux, but if you are using a Windows machine, you'll probably have to install just a separate NPM package to use environment variables, uh, but it should be pretty straightforward. But now all we need to do is just run our application. So let's do NPM start and we get video services not defined. So of course that's probably because we haven't imported it here. Let's import video service.js. Sweet, so now our service started and we're starting to calculate the time of the video. So if we go now, let's refresh this. Looks like we get another error. FS is not defined. So basically I just wasn't defining everything, which is probably in here as well. So just import the FS module now. All right, we're incrementing the time again. Now let's try this one more time. We go on here, more, more errors. Where's this one? Oh, express service. So it's not the video service, but the express service. So import FS here. All right, we're running again. Let's see if this works for the final time. And there we go. So we can see, let me move this over to the side. We're on current time 11, 12. So let's refresh this to what we get. We're on 17, which matches what our server is displaying. And also we can see our range header being sent right here. So bytes lists the bytes and then a dash, which essentially is the client saying, just send the whole file from onwards. So it's saying, send this byte to however long the video file is, but we're not doing that because of the way we're handling the range header. So what we're doing instead is we're just taking this number, adding a byte to it and sending that. But so this is my video on creating a video live streaming service with Node. If you wanna support me, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor from the Chrome extension store. Link is in the description. Besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.